everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, I am uh, trying a new contraption from the Paint Pour store today. We have this little thing. Uh, it actually comes apart and you can use it uh, in different ways. So you could use this by itself, you could use this by itself, or you can use them together. Today I'm using this piece by itself. And I'm gonna see what that does. So, um, this is going to be a straight pour using this little contraption. The colors I am using uh, for my base coat slash background, I have Dioxazine Purple uh, by Liquitex Basics with a touch of Artist Loft Soft Body uh, White added to it to brighten it up just a bit. I have Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in Garnet, Copper, and 24 karat gold. I'm not sure what's going to happen. The garnet and the gold are kind of bossy, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, these paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts flow draw. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% flow draw until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is about a two on my consistency scale. You can see it makes a mound, but it disappears quickly. It is making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. It is not getting thin and then thick and then thin. It looks like a pencil lead. It, it should be a very smooth stream off of your stick. If it is not smooth, you need to keep mixing. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that will give you the exact paint brands, colors, consistency, uh, the technique, of course, all of the things that I can't fit on a card. This here is a picture of the painting in that video. This here is a uh, tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the color palette cards with the technique cards. And you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is pour some of my base color. This is the background color goes in the cup, the base coat goes on the canvas, so this is the background color. Pouring that in my cup, I wanna make sure that I have enough for the pour, and I'm going to reserve some in my cup to put in at the very end of my uh, pour cup. I like to cover the paints that pop to the top because these are cell makers, that's what they do. I'm gonna put them in the cup and they're gonna come to the top. I always lay down a base coat because I want my paints to slide around easily on the canvas. If your canvas is dry, something has to stick to the canvas first. And generally what happens, it's gonna be whatever is on the outside edge of your paint puddle. And sometimes that's where the coolest stuff happens. And I like to give myself as many options as possible when it comes to the composition. So I try to maximize my options. This is also one of the reasons that I use a base coat that is the same color as my background. So if I decided to leave negative space, it would be seamless, but also um, if I were to use a white base coat, and if there were some little air bubbles in the base coat, when I pop the bubbles, I will wind up with some 
very tiny white cells that would just not work in this painting because there's no white in this painting. So I try to eliminate any potential disasters before they happen. I like to troubleshoot before there's trouble. I have covered my edges already because the way that I mix for a straight pour, it's pretty thin and Floetrol can sometimes uh, not give you the best coverage on your sides. So I just like to get that covered first, again, to uh, troubleshoot any potential disasters. Okay, now I'm going to add my paints to the cup. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this garnet next to this purple. Mayhaps I should have used berry. We're, we're gonna see what happens. I'm going to pour from up high and I want the gold to go in last because the color that I put in last, a little bit of it sinks to the bottom and then that ends up in the center of my painting that winds up being the focal point. And since this little device is going to give me a flower-like effect, I think that uh, having that pop up in the center can only be a good thing. Okay, pouring from up high, allowing it to sink and churn. I'm going to put my little contraption in the center of my painting. This takes me a second <laughs> to get it fully centered. Okay, now I'm going to take some of this purple and go over top. You can see how all those cell makers came to the top. This is going to allow all of those paints to have some background color to react with. Um, so I'm going to spin. I want these colors to kind of come out uniformly. So I'm going to spin slowly, well, relatively slowly. So far, so good. It's looking like a flower. As I get towards the end of the cup, I will get closer, but I kind of want these paints to float out a little more before that gold comes out. Here comes the gold. I'm going to let this come out slowly. Okay, here we go. Here's the gold. I'm actually going to spin this a little bit faster because I want this center to look like a center of a flower. I'm actually going to do some rings. 
alternating direction will kind of give it a rose-like appearance. Although this is the 24 karat gold, so it may just turn into a bunch of cells. Okay, getting close to the end here. All right, there we go. I'm going to lift this carefully. All right, heck yeah. I like that so far, that looks very cool. I'm going to pop these bubbles and what's going to happen is the paints that are sitting underneath that have bubbles in them, as I pop these bubbles, it's going to bring those colors with it. And what happens is the deco art paints have a matte finish to them. And so what happens is the deco art paints are matte. The Liquitex paints have a more glossy finish. And the matte paints will push the glossy paints away and create cells. It's called the hydrophobic effect. Um, silicone creates a hydrophobic effect, but it also gives you very random cells. And it is a pain in the booty to clean to be able to varnish or resin. So, if you can get those cells without having to use silicone, why wouldn't you? As you can see my work surface is not level um, this will be drying on another table so I will let this paint puddle percolate I'm gonna let these cells pop up and do whatever they're gonna do and as they sit they will grow And then when I stretch it, they will just get bigger. And that's how you get those cool boulder cells is by allowing those paints to churn in the cup and blend. And then when they make the cells, they have a very 3D effect. I love that I have some of this action with the cells going on here. That is cool. Patience is a virtue when it comes to cells without silicone. The longer I let this sit, the more cells are going to pop up. It's going to give them time to grow. And then when I stretch it, that's how I get those beautiful, juicy boulder cells. Okay. So far, so good. The center is very cool. It's getting a little off center, unfortunately. I have to get some kind of handyman over here to build me a surface that is level. Um, I'm working on uh, three folding tables and then there's some uh, MDF on top of it but it's smaller pieces of MDF because I couldn't bring in uh, a you know gosh what is this like I think it's like four by six or something like that um, by myself I don't have a truck so 
I need someone to help me with that. I'll figure that out eventually. Continuing to pop the bubbles. You'll see them, they continue to rise as it sits. Okay, I have a little bit of paint left in my cup and I'm just going to give my corners a little more juice. Um, someone mentioned that they have a hard time covering the corners on pieces like this. What I recommend, um, my usual formula uh, for covering a canvas is figure out the square inches, which would be your length times your width. That's your square inch. I divide that by 28. But in this case, because I want this to stretch evenly, I will measure from here to here and do it as a circle. Measure the area as a circle. And so I do wind up using more paint than I would if I were just doing it as a square. But this allows me to get that full coverage. I don't like wasting paint, but it's better to use too much and spin it off or tilt it off than it is to not use enough and then you ruin the whole painting. All right, I think I'm ready to give this a spin. So if I were using the amount of paint that would be needed for a square, this would not be falling off the edge on its own. So I will have to tilt some of this off or spin this off. You don't have to do it quickly. This is getting wonky. That bums me out, but I see my spinner is making noises again. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I still haven't figured that out, <laughs> why it does that. Today it sounds like a, uh, a game at the carnival. Who's going to win? Big money. Who's going to win that plant? <laughs> Almost there, almost there. Okay, well, I am not mad at this one bit. Just gonna zhuzh up my corners. That very, very corner always seems to get missed. Okay, how are we looking? All right, good. So what I'm doing right here, I'm kind of tilting it to see how much paint is left on there. If it's not moving around a lot, I should be good. And I think I'm good. So I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to let it do what it's going to do. I am already in love with this piece. If it does not change at all, I am thrilled. Um, this is very cool. Very, very cool. All right, I'm going to let this sit and uh, I'll bring in for a close up back in a few. Okay, here it is. Man, I couldn't have asked for more except for that center to be, you know, more symmetrical. But uh, I'm not I'm not that angry at it. It just kind of looks like the the flower sitting in an angle. I love the pattern of these cells. Absolutely love it. Expect to be seeing a whole bunch of stuff like this coming up. <laughs> um, I do love the straight pour. I love the surprising effects that you get from them. Um, and I really like to 
experiment how to get different patterns with those cells. And I'm over the moon with this. So uh, check out the description box below if you want to try this, if you want to get that nifty little contraption. I am an affiliate with the Paint Pour store, and uh, there is a discount code for 15% off in the description box. If you use that code, I receive a commission at no additional cost to you. Same with Deco Art Paints. If you wanted to get your hands on some of those, I'm also a Deco Art affiliate. So you can uh, use the link and the coupon code and get yourself a discount and help the sister out in the meantime. Um, I'm also an affiliate with uh, lots of other companies, uh, Amazon, and they're all in the description box below. Uh, also in the description box, you will find the link to my Patreon. Join us there. We're going to be having some fun over there. We have Zooms every week, uh, Q&A, Zooms, and socials, and uh, just kind of helping each other over our hurdles that we create for ourselves in our mind. Um, it's kind of like therapy and philosophy and, um, yeah, we have a lot of fun over there. And, uh, also in the description box, you'll find a link to the, uh, Fluid Art Experience. There will be a trailer at the end of this video, uh, giving you more information on that. But I will be teaching in Seattle in April. Uh, I'll be teaching you how to do straight bores and how to get cells without silicone and cloud bores. Lots of good stuff. Uh, also, in the description box, you will find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale. And you will also find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art, join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. Okay, that is it for me for today. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you did, please do like and share and subscribe. And if you are subscribed already, please make sure you click that bell and click all notifications only 7% of my subscribers are receiving notifications because they added that bell after I already had like 100,000 subscribers. So it's a retroactive thing. And if you are not receiving notifications, that is probably why. Um, you need to make sure that you are receiving all notifications or you will probably not receive any. Okay, that's it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.